Are you looking to see if you can purchase a home for under $1 million in the Franklin, Tennessee area? If so, then stay tuned because in today's video, I'm going to be listing out five different neighborhoods where you can purchase a home for under a million dollars. Everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin Martin and I'm a local Nashville real estate agent and founder of the Caitlin Martin team powered by Weiger Realtors, the Andrews Group. We specialize in helping out-of-staters looking to relocate to the Middle Tennessee area. Now, if this is your first time stopping by my channel, thank you so much. Please feel free to click subscribe down below so that you are notified every time I release new video content all about making the move to the Middle Tennessee area. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about five awesome neighborhoods where you can purchase a great home for under a million dollars. So if you've seen any of my content before, you know that when we're talking about Franklin, Tennessee, in the last four years, we've really watched our market in the middle Tennessee area go a little haywire. And that's what's true for a lot of places across the country in response to what happened in 2020. So back before the pandemic, we actually saw the average home sale price in Franklin be right around 500 to 550. And so now that average home price point is sitting right around a million dollars. And so one of the questions that I get asked and one of the things that people wanna know is, if their budget is below a million, can they still buy a great house in the Franklin area? And the answer is yes. So in today's video, we're actually going to be talking about five neighborhoods where you can find a great home for under a million dollars. So let's go ahead and jump into this list. Okay, so first up, we're going to talk about McKay's Mill. So McKay's Mill, we will take a look at a map in a moment when I show you the MLS and kind of give you a visual of just what the homes look like in McKay's Mill. But just know this is actually going to be located on the east side of 65. So McKay's Mill, it is a great neighborhood. A lot of what you're going to find in McKay's Mill is going to be two-story brick homes. Some have been more renovated. Others could use some updating. Um, some lots will certainly back to trees. Others you may have a neighbor. One of the things that people like about McKay's Mill is there's actually a grocery store located right there within the McKay's Mill neighborhood. So it makes it really convenient. In general, the location of McKay's Mill is really popular. Like when we saw the market uh, really start to go uh, you know, white hot, go a little haywire. Back when we saw the market really start to go white hot around, uh, you know, springtime of 2021, McKay's Mill was a very desirable neighborhood. And a lot of times that comes down to the schools that it's zoned for, the location and the convenience, and you get more of that true traditional neighborhood feel. It does have amenities like a community swimming pool. So you do have that, but also it's a great convenient location. And so these are reasons why people love the McKay's Mill neighborhood. So we're going to take a look at what's in McKay's Mill. And one thing to know, just not only about McKay's Mill, but these neighborhoods that we're going to talk about in this video is there can be homes over that million dollar price point. It's not that these are only capped below a million dollars, but these neighborhoods that we're talking about, you can certainly get a great home for under a million, but then there can be some that cross that million dollar mark. So let's go to the MLS, let's take a look at the location, and we'll talk more about the statistics of just what you can get in McKay's Mill. Okay, so we are taking a look at McKay's Mill, as you can see, um, you've got red, green, and yellow. So what this denotes is going to be green is active on the market. Yellow is under contract, red is sold. And this is gonna be what's sold in the last six months. But first, what I wanna do is I wanna zoom out a little bit so you can get an idea of just where McKay's Mill is located. As you can see, it's gonna be just east of Interstate 65. One of the reasons people like McKay's Mill is you've got this great close proximity of getting into downtown Franklin. You also have quick, easy access on Cool Springs Boulevard because if you are wanting to get into the Cool Springs area, which is where pretty much 
any and everything that you can want in terms of shopping, grocery stores, restaurants, uh, the big mall, Cool Springs Mall is there. You got quick, easy access to everything that it has to offer, which makes it really, really convenient. And then of course, as you can see, you're close to Liberty Park and also this Marcella Vivret Smith Park. So you have all of this right here within close proximity. Also, this neighborhood comes with a lot of amenities like a community pool, walking trails, playgrounds, things like that. So this is why people have really desired the McKay's Mill area. And so let's just take a look in terms of what you can get. As you can see, um, as of right now, the um, you know, the most cost effective home is going to be the 1731 on Liberty Pike for 755. And as you can see, you're predominantly getting a brick two story home. This neighborhood's established. It came about in the early 2000s. So some homes will have some updates. Some will need some updates. But again, this is a great community to be in and it's got great proximity to shopping and just what Franklin has to offer. So this is one of the reasons why people really enjoy this neighborhood. So that was McKay's Mill. Couple other things to know about McKay's Mill. So when we take a look at what the average sales price point is over the last six months in McKay's Mill, it's $796,022. So again, as you can see, you can see homes that are sitting in the 900s, a couple have eclipsed the 1 million mark, but you also can get a great home for under that 1 million price point as well. When we're looking at what the average home looks like that you can get in McKay's Mill, it's going to be a four bed, two and a half bath house. It's gonna be around 3,100 square feet. And on average, the average price per square foot in the McKay's Mill neighborhood is gonna run you about $258 a square foot. And then when we take a look at what has sold over the last six months, on average, homes are selling at about 98% of list price. So overall, we're not seeing these homes take these dramatic price cuts. We are seeing them still stay there relatively close to what list price actually is. And then of course, we have to talk about schools when it comes to McKay's Mill. So for McKay's Mill, you're looking at Clovercroft Elementary, Fred J. Page Middle, and then Centennial High School. So again, McKay's Mill, great neighborhood, great location. And so if you are somebody that's looking to get in under the 1 million price point, McKay's Mill can be a great option to check out. Okay, so moving on to neighborhood number two, we're actually going to stay on the east side of Interstate 65 for this. And this one is going to be the Highlands at Ladd Park. So this is going to be a newer community. So actually, if you take a look at a map, if you find Carruthers Parkway, so it's going to run south uh, from Murfreesboro Road or 96, you're gonna see it, it's gonna run parallel to Interstate 65. So right along Carruthers is going to be a cluster of neighborhoods. And a lot of them are going to be similar to Highlands at Ladd Park. You're gonna notice a similar build. So while it's this, uh, you know, each of these communities are broken up into different neighborhoods with different names, a lot of what we're going to talk about with Highlands can be applicable to those other communities that you'll find along Carruthers, you know, such as say Lockwood Glen, Echelon, but we're specifically going to be talking about the Highlands at Ladd Park. So Highlands at Ladd Park has actually been a really popular community over the last five or so years. It does have newer built homes, so it is a newer community. But with Highlands at Ladd Park, you do have great community amenities from walking trails to a community pool. This community also sits amongst rolling hills. So depending on where you're located in the neighborhood, you can get really, really beautiful views um, of the rolling hills there in the Franklin area. So these homes, you're gonna find them leaning more towards like a modern um, craftsman style, so to say, you know, with, with hints of Southern flair, you can get that more traditional two-story brick, uh, you know, kind of modern colonial look as well. But within Highlands at Ladd Park, when we talk about this, now the average sales price over the last six months, it does eclipse the 1 million mark. It's actually 1,044,000. So that's what the average price point has been. And I know that we're talking about what's below. But with the Highlands at Ladd Park, you can be certainly under a million, but they also have several that will go over a million up to about one, three. And so that's where the average comes in. 
and why it makes it just a little bit over the 1 million mark. However, 24 homes have sold within Highlands at Ladd Park over the last six months. And of that, 13 were above the million dollar price point and then 11 were below the million dollar price point. So we're actually going to take a look at that and just see what it is that you can get. Now, a couple of things to know about Highlands at Ladd Park before we take a look at it really quick. So the average home that you can get in Highlands at Ladd Park is gonna be a four bed, three bath house. On average, you're gonna be around 3,500 square feet. Now, when it comes to price per square foot, you're actually gonna be looking at about 300 a square foot. The average has actually been 299 a square foot. Again, that can vary a little bit. And then on average, homes have actually been selling at about 99.5% of less price. So again, not seeing major price reductions in this area. But let's take a look at what has sold, what has sold under a million, what was selling over a million. So let's go ahead and take a look at the MLS. Okay, so we are taking a look at Highlands at Ladd Park. Again, you can see it is just east of Interstate 65, but let's actually back this out really quick and show you where it is in proximity. So this is gonna be further south um, in Franklin compared to where McKay's Mill is located. Okay, so one thing that I do wanna point out when it comes to um, this community. So if you take a look here at the bottom, you can see this street that, that takes this curve here. It's called Long Lane. And so Long Lane is actually gonna take you down to this interstate, uh, you know, Passover, or let's see. So this is actually gonna take you down um, to where the Goose Creek Bypass exit is for Interstate 65 and actually just across the interstate over here. This is where you're going to find the Berry Farms area. I've actually done a video on Berry Farms and its community, but if you're looking like this is where your closest grocery store is going to be. This is like a great place for coffee shops, um, things like that. So again, you've got great close proximity, which isn't to say, you know, that you can't get elsewhere within Franklin. It's just, that's going to be the closest one. And I mean, it's truly just five, seven minutes away. So let's talk more in depth about the kind of homes you can get. So here we're taking a look at what's currently active on the market. You can see the Snowden Street, 939.9. You've got Fontwell Lane at 950. But this is just giving you an idea of what you can get within uh, Highlands at Ladd Park. And as you can see, you know, some of these bigger homes, you can see they've eclipsed that 1 million mark. However, let's take a look at what's under contract. So it's Molly Bright Lane, Rycroft Lane, Beeman Drive, Irvin, um, or let's see, Irvine. You can see here, um, all of these are going to be sitting well below that million dollar price point. You can see 2,500 square foot house, 22, 23, um, 3320. So this just is giving you an idea of just kind of what the neighborhood looks like, this style of house that you can get. You know, this uh, Fontwell Lane sold for 915. It comes with a pool. Um, so this is just an example of what there is. So again, the, the great thing about this neighborhood is that if you are searching above the million dollar price point, there's certainly options there for you. If you are looking below the million dollar price point, again, there's plenty of options too. And really remember 24 sold in the last six months and it was almost 50, 50, you know, you had two more that fell into the million plus dollar price point lane. And, and that was a million 50 to a million three. And then, but you still had 11 that sold below um, the $1 million price point. A couple of other things that I want to make note of when it comes to this neighborhood. So like I said, it is really popular. Typically what one of the biggest downfalls or what I hear clients deem as one of the downfalls is that within this neighborhood, you're certainly going to have the opportunity where you, uh, you know, your backyard backs up to a neighbor's backyard. And so that has been a deterrent for some people. Now that's not the case everywhere because I actually have clients that built in Highlands at Ladd Park and they got a fantastic lot, um, which the community is, is built out now, but they got one of the remaining lots. 
and they have this beautiful view overlooking the rolling hills. So it really, it really does depend. You can certainly get a home that backs to trees, but at the same time, several homes will back to neighbors. And because this is a newer community, there's going to be less opportunity for mature trees. So again, you know, you'll see that people that do back to neighbors a lot of times will put privacy trees up just so that they have a little bit of, you know, extra uh, privacy there within their backyards. And then of course we do have to talk about schools when we're talking about Highlands at Ladd Park and it is zoned for Creekside Elementary, Fred J. Page Middle, and Fred J. Page High School. Okay so for number three let's jump across the interstate and we're actually going to be talking about Sullivan Farms. Again this is going to be another really popular neighborhood. Lots of great opportunity to get in under a million. So let's take a look at Sullivan Farms. Okay, so now we're taking a look at Sullivan Farms. This has been another very popular community in recent years. Now this is gonna be a well-established community. So you will certainly have homes that are gonna be built back in the early 2000s um, around that time frame. Also, you will find that you get more mature trees in this community, but let's take a look here at the location. So as you can see, this is gonna be on the west side of 65. So we were just over in Highlands at Lad park which is going to be located down here as you can see Carruthers is that road that I mentioned that runs parallel to 65. Now we're jumping to the other side going up Lewisburg Pike and this is where you're going to find Sullivan Farms. So let's talk about Sullivan Farms. So again these are going to be homes as you scroll through. So you can see one here with the white painted brick, but it, in general, these homes are gonna be more of that really traditional two style brick. Of course, the white painted one is gonna be one that's updated. One thing that I do wanna point out as we're taking a look at this, because this neighborhood primarily is going to fall under well under a million. You will see this in Woodway at 225. This is the outlier and that is actually exceedingly above the average for the neighborhood, which we'll talk about what the average sales price point is. So please do not let this one sway you. Um, this is unique just because the, back the backyard is completely tricked out between, um, you know, a pool, a fireplace, basketball court, all sorts of things. It's got a really wild backyard. However, let's take a look at what the average home looks like within Sullivan Farms. Again, you can see it's it's really gonna be these two-story brick or, or you're gonna have a mix of brick with siding. You can still get some with siding, but primarily you're look, gonna be looking at a brick home. And as you can see with these price points, as I scroll through this list, they are well below the million dollar price point and people love this community. Again, you're gonna have great access here to jump on Mac Hatcher, get where you're going. It's also in great close proximity to downtown Franklin. So if you are wanting to be in a neighborhood below a million dollars and be close to downtown Franklin, Sullivan Farms is a great opportunity. Now, when it comes to these houses, you know, you can definitely tell that some of them are going to need some interior updates because they are older homes. However, some of them have had updates made to them. So it just kind of depends. But if you're not afraid of maybe doing some cosmetic updates, this is a great opportunity to be in a great community close to downtown Franklin. A couple other things to know about Sullivan Farms. Like I said, some of these homes are going to have updates already made to them. Others, you're going to need to make the updates. A couple other things that we tend to see within Sullivan Farms, a lot of times the primary bedroom is actually gonna be located upstairs, which is going to be true of homes that were really built, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. We can tend to see that primary bedroom on the second level. Now, when it comes to average sales price point, over the last six months, the average sales price point in Sullivan Farms has been 785,000 and some change. So again, sitting well below that $1 million price point, you still get a great home and a desirable community. Now, when it comes to the average home, you're looking, generally speaking, in the Sullivan Farms area at a four bed, two and a half bath home. You're generally gonna be around that 27, 2,800 square feet, again, give or take, 
depending on the home, depending on the price point. And then when it comes to average price per square foot, you're looking at about 286 a square foot and homes in this community have still been selling at about 99.4% of list price. So again, not taking major price drops. Now, the big thing to know with Sullivan Farm, so when we're gonna talk about schools, generally speaking, it's gonna be zoned for the same elementary and middle school throughout the entire community. So that's gonna be Winstead Elementary and Legacy Middle. Now the neighborhood actually splits zones for high school. So part of the neighborhood goes to Centennial High School. The other part of the neighborhood goes to Independence High School. So that is something to keep in mind if there's a specific school, high school that you want your children to go to, it is just worth taking a look and seeing which, which school it is gonna be zoned for. Okay, neighborhood number four on our list is going to be Fieldstone Farms. So in Franklin, you're gonna notice there's gonna be a couple of neighborhoods that include farms within it. So you do have Sullivan Farms with Fieldstone Farms. It's its own unique neighborhood. So we're gonna take a look at Fieldstone Farms. Okay, so now we're taking a look at Fieldstone Farms. So this is going to be located north of downtown Franklin. So as you can see here, this is showing us where it is and it actually does cross over this Hillsborough Road. However, I'm gonna zoom out here just so that you guys get an idea in relation to where it is for downtown Franklin. So as you can see, you literally take Hillsborough Road and it runs you right into downtown Franklin. So this is a great community. One of the reasons why it's a great community is because it has a lot of different size housing. So this can be great if maybe you're looking for a community where you and your family want to live, but maybe you also want a smaller home for say aging parents and you want to be in close proximity so they're close to grain babies. This is a great community because it does offer that opportunity. As you can see with the type of housing that we have showing up right here that's active on the market, you do have this three bed, two and a half bath, cute house on Idlewood Court, you know, just shy of 1500 square feet for right at 540. But then as you can see, you've got, again, we're gonna, in Franklin, a lot of these older, more established communities, you're really gonna find that two story brick home. And that's what you can see um, is a lot of what you're gonna get here within the Fieldstone Farms community. So again, we've got another great smaller home that's coming on the market. And this is just, this is one of those neighborhoods that can kind of grow with you through different stages of life. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll through, give you an idea of just what the different type of housing looks like within the community. Another thing to know about Fieldstone Farms, so because it does split, like there are gonna be different sections of Fieldstone Farms because it does split, split this Hillsborough Road here. There's also going to be a portion of Fieldstone Farms that actually is part of a gated community. So if you are looking for a gated opportunity, there is going to be that. However, the homes within that gated community do eclipse that 1 million mark. So as you can see, this is just an example of just kind of the home style that you're gonna get within um, Fieldstone Farm. So as you can see, it's gonna be a lot of that just traditional two-story brick home. And so as you can see, you do have this great um, updated white painted brick. We are starting to see some of that just to give it a little bit more of a modern feel. However, as you can see, we've only had in the last six months, only had three sell for over a million. However, everything else has been below a million and, and well below. So again, you have a lot of great opportunity here within Fieldstone Farms, just depending on your price point. So as we were just taking a look at the different kind of homes, when we take a look at what the average home sale has been within Fieldstone Farms over the last six months, that's gonna be right around $721,000. And again, you saw just from the examples, you can get below that, you can get above that, just depending on your price point and your budget and what it is that you're looking for. So in Fieldstone Farms, the average house that you're gonna get is gonna be a four bed, two and a half bath house. It's going to be around that 2,500 square feet again can go significantly up from that can also be below that as well but that's going to be the average and then the average price per square foot within fieldstone farms is actually going to be a little bit higher than some of the other communities we've talked about and that's actually going to be at 303 a square foot and then on average it's been selling at 99.5 percent of list price over the last six months 
And then when we're talking about schools for elementary, you have Hunter's Bend, then you have Grassland Middle and Franklin High School. A couple of other things to note. So Hillsborough Road is gonna be a road, as I showed you on the map, it does lead down directly into downtown Franklin. The Hillsborough Road can actually also take you north all the way up into Green Hills. So it's a great, um, so it really is a great convenient location just because you can kind of take the back way up into Green Hills versus having to go out, get on Interstate 65 and then deal with traffic getting up. So it does make a nice straight access point whether you wanna go up into Green Hills or whether you wanna go down into downtown Franklin. Also right outside of Fieldstone Farms, down Hillsborough Road, right before you get towards the, the kind of the heart of downtown Franklin, that's where you're also going to find um, grocery stores, gas stations. So again, those everyday amenities are just really close and convenient, which is again, another reason why people desire this community. Um, also, another thing to know, I did talk about before how uh, the neighborhood is split across Hillsborough Road. So they do have a great community center with pool, um, a clubhouse as well. And so that is going to be on the left side of Hillsborough Road. So depending on where you buy, it may be on your side of the neighborhood or you may have to drive across Hillsborough Road to get to it because Hillsborough Road is going to be a four lane road. So it's not necessarily one that you want to cross um, by foot, but just know they do still have great community amenities within the neighborhood. It's just depending on where you live, it may just be a short drive away versus just a walk through the neighborhood. And then our last community that we're gonna talk about today is going to be Cottonwood. Now Cottonwood is a great neighborhood for several reasons. So this is where you're going to get more of your traditional Southern uh, style house. It can have a Cape Cod flair to it. Couple of things to know about Cottonwood and we're gonna we're gonna look at it when we take a look at the map, but Cottonwood is one, it is close to the Harpeth River. So if you're somebody that is concerned about flooding, this is going to be you know, something that you wanna pay attention to. So within Cottonwood, some of the homes were a part of that 100 year flood that we had back in 2010. You know, It's not to say that the whole house flooded, but some houses did deal with flooding when that happened, you know, I mean, it's been 14 years ago now, which is wild to think about because it doesn't feel that long. But the entire community is not at risk. And so if you are somebody and you're really interested in the Cottonwood neighborhood, because there's a lot of things to love about this neighborhood, but say the concern, um, but say the flooding concerns you, then that's just a matter of making sure whether the home, you know, falls into a flood zone or whether it doesn't. And we'll actually take a look at the flood zone map so you can see that as well, uh, the FEMA drawn flood map. So we'll take a look at that. Um, and then we're gonna talk more about Cottonwood. Okay, so now we're going to be taking a look at the Cottonwood neighborhood. So as you can see, this is gonna be a smaller neighborhood and it's really going to be defined by this Cotton Lane out to this river landing. So this is going to be where Cottonwood is located and actually it's very close to Fieldstone Farms which is going to be you know the the portion of it that's going to be on the left side of Hillsborough Road it's actually located right here so again it's going to be in close proximity to what we were just talking about um, but as you can see the there's less uh, homes that have sold in this community before people tend to love this neighborhood so it's just you know it's a little bit of a smaller community not as many homes have sold um, but as you can see over here you really have some of these are going to be that really charming like siding uh, colonial style others are going to be brick or these brick two stories um, but this neighborhood it's really kind of idyllic as you drive through as you can see I just love uh, the curb appeal of these homes. Yes, some can go over a million others. You know, most of the ones that have sold in the last six months, you have more that have sold under a million than above that million dollar price point. Uh, one thing that I do want to point out about this neighborhood, so as you can see, the Harpeth River is close by. So we're actually going to take a look at a FEMA flood map because just because the neighborhood is near does not mean the entire neighborhood is within the flood zone. Some of the homes absolutely are. And so if that is something that is of a concern for you, then, you know, it's either if you're interested in this neighborhood, it's making sure that you're in a home that has not flooded 
um, or is not in that flood map or you know just making sure that if you don't want to be in a flood zone those homes are eliminated from your search so we're going to take a look at this FEMA flood map so this is within our tax um, record so we're able to turn on the FEMA flood map so as you can tell so all of this here is going to be cottonwood so this is going to be the FEMA flood map everything that's in this teal blue or this darker shade here this the darker shade is going to be those that are in the heavily like high risk areas the blue is going to be a moderate risk area like the teal blue so as you can see there there is a chunk of these homes right here that do fall within that that high risk area and if you're purchasing with a mortgage it will require flood insurance however you can see there's a great portion of the neighborhood that's not within the flood map so these are things to keep in mind if you know the the just because it's in a flood zone doesn't mean it's going to flood now this map has been based off of the historic flood that we had back in 2010 so if we were to receive another rainfall like what caused that um you know what caused that flood there is the opportunity for flooding some people are okay with it some people don't want to risk it but it is really important to mention if you are interested in the cottonwood neighborhood a couple other things to know about the cottonwood neighborhood so this is going to be a little bit on the higher end, kind of like Highlands at Ladd Park. So if we're looking at what the average sales price point has been over the last six months, it sits right at $938,000. Now the average home that you're going to get within Cottonwood is gonna be a four bed, three bath home. You're going to be around that 2,900, 3,000 square foot range. And the average price per square foot is actually gonna be sitting around 315. And then when it comes to the average, you know, percentage of list price, it's actually sold at 100.29% of list price within the last six months. And then when it comes to schools, what it's zoned for is Walnut Grove Elementary, Grassland Middle, and Franklin High School. So again, there's a lot to love about the Cottonwood neighborhood. It's very charming to drive through. You typically are going to get to sit on a lot that's gonna be a little bit bigger than say some of the other communities that we've talked about. You're gonna have plenty of mature trees. It's certainly an established community. So there's a lot of great opportunity within Cottonwood. However, one of the deterrents could be the fact that there are going to be certain homes and streets that will fall within that flood zone. So if you are thinking about making a move to Franklin, if you are curious about other communities outside of these, where you can purchase for under a million, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. All of my contact information is below. If you are actually ready to start that conversation and get your search going, there's going to be a link down below where you can click to go ahead and book a Zoom call with me. If you're not quite ready for that just yet, that's okay too. I do have a free Nashville relocation guide located down below where you can just click to download. Again, my name is Caitlin Martin. I'll see you next time. Thank you.